Hi, Chris Maholka here. This is another one of my tips and tricks videos for fly tying. The other day I was watching someone tie check nymphs on YouTube and they were wrapping flat wire around the hook or across the back to help uh, weight the fly and keep it thin rather than using round wire which built up too big of a body. Uh, well, that's all well and good, but I noticed that nowhere on the market is there flat lead. So I'm gonna show you how to make flat lead. So to get my flat lead for tying, here are the things I'm working with. Some type of a vise. You want something with a nice smooth flat surface, because that's what we're gonna be working on. This is a uh, fairly inexpensive one. I buy a lot of my inexpensive tools uh, from Harbor Freight Tools. I think they have shops pretty much everywhere in the country and a vise like this would cost you a couple bucks. If you have one of these, fine. Uh, since we're not doing big pieces, something small like this little jeweler's uh, anvil will work fine. Um, I'm using a small ball peen hammer, and I'll show you how to help make this work better for you here in just a moment. Your small ball peen hammers for pounding the lead out flat. And then you need your either round lead, like this is a 0.025 round, or uh, in millimeters, this is a looks like a 0.4 millimeter round wire. And this is the way it comes in all fly shops, round. So let me show you how we get it from round to flat. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our little ball peen hammer here is going to work well for us. So what we want to look at is the face of the hammer. A lot of times they'll be really rounded or they'll have paint or goo or something on them. You want them to be as flat and smooth as possible. So the easiest way to make this work is take a piece of sandpaper, emery paper, put it on your anvil because we know the anvil surface is flat. You take your hammer, place it on there, and you just go in some circles. And I'm holding up really close to the head, not way back on the handle, because you want to control the head of the hammer. Go around like that a few times. Check. And if you have a nice, clean, smooth surface, you're ready to pound your lead out. So now I'm going to do is get my hammer right up here on top. I'm just going to lay the lead flat out. I'm going to smooth out so I get nice and straight there. Just lay it right out. I'm just going to start tapping. If there are any places that are thinner, you just tap a little more in that spot. The lead spreads out. And I'm just very lightly tapping on this. You just work your way up the lead. After you've tapped through it a while, you have, you can see the diameter difference between the round and the flat. There is your flat lead for tying check nymphs. Or another way you can do it, if you're lucky enough to come across some old plumber's lead, and this is what they put around the roofs to keep uh, moss and things from growing up around vent pipes coming through the roof, uh, you can use this as well. Now this is a little bit harder material than your spools of lead, mostly because it has more zinc in it to help kill off the moss and the things on your roof. So you can sometimes pick this up at junkyards and stuff for next to nothing. This is about a pound or so, a lot more than you'll get on a spool. So what you need to do with this, not very thick, is find yourself a pair of old shears. These are carpet shears. Now, this is, this is not your grade school run around, do crafts, and don't run with the scissors down the hall, which I wouldn't recommend doing that anyway. But for shears, these are great for cutting lead. So what I'm going to do is just lay these along the edge, and I want to cut off the thinnest strip of lead I can cut. So, that gives me a piece, oh, I just cut off about six inches or so, and it's almost square. Now, we can do the same technique on this that we did on our wire, but it's kind of going to come out a little different. Let me show you how that works. Once this is cut off the sheet of plumber's lead, same kind of process as doing the smaller diameter. It just takes a little more work and a little more pressure. And a lot of times, you'll spread this out flat enough, you'll need to trim it. You will have to trim it with other scissors. So I'll go over that, flip it over. 
since this is thick, I'm hitting a little harder. Now, once this is thinned out like this, you can take other older scissors, cut it to length, and you can also go down on the side that you flattened already, and you can cut this back down the middle. Try not to cut fingers. Now you have a square thin piece. <clears throat> that you can just put back on your anvil. Now we have the thin stuff ready to wrap on our check nibs. So there are a couple other things you should know. Anytime you're pounding on anything hard with something else hard, you need to wear safety glasses. Rarely does anything chip off of one of these, but if it did happen and hit you in the eye, it could very, cause very serious damage. Also, since you're working with lead, it does get on your hands. If you're younger male, if you're a female, uh, I would suggest wearing like latex gloves because they'll help you keep a good feel on it when you're holding it and things, but you also don't get it on your hands. I wash my hands immediately after working with the lead like this, so I don't have it on my skin any longer than necessary. You definitely don't want to eat or drink anything when you have lead on your hands because you can get it on the food or on your drink and accidentally consume it. So you need to be careful when you're dealing with lead. But that is how you do the flat stuff for things like check nips. As you can see from that piece that I trimmed off when I originally started with the big scissors, a piece like this is a lifetime supply to most fly tires. So you can either do it with the sheets of lead, the round lead, which will last you next to forever as well, or smaller spools. You get primarily the same thing. You get your flat lead that will wrap nicely or tight on the back of the shank. And uh, it's, it's a product you can't find anywhere on the market, but you can make yourself and improve your fly tying. Join me for my next tips and tricks, and I'll see you then.